Many people use Excel in business and industry. It's very common for uh, data entry, analysis, calculations, and it's very useful for that. But often there's a need for higher level analysis, and then it's time to move from Excel information to jump. There are a variety of sources of information as it gets into Excel. This can be manually entered. Sometimes equipment is able to export information in an Excel format. Database queries can sometimes be executed that stop perhaps in a flat file format, such as text or CSV, or even possibly connect directly to Excel. The first question is, what's the data structure? Data structures can vary from simple two-dimensional row and column format to something more complex. Perhaps it spans across multiple tables. Perhaps the cells in the worksheet are hidden or merged, and there can be multiple row or hierarchical column headers. Before we get started with Jump, let's just talk about the Excel format. Excel works on a row-column grid structure. There can be multiple worksheets, tabs, within a common document. Tables are a collection of information, and they can be located anywhere in a worksheet. They can be interspersed with random content. Row 1 in a worksheet contain anything or nothing. It's just part of the grid. Tables can have multiple rows of column header names or no column header names. Names are just a cosmetic courtesy for readers. Excel internally uses grid references. Jump enforces a structure on the data, like many data handling applications. Each column is named and reflects a single attribute or measure. The names must be unique. Each column has a data type, character or number, you will notice just like Excel, characters are justified to the left, numbers to the right. Each row is a single unit or observation. Row one in Jump contains the first data point. Going from Excel to Jump. Today, we're gonna to talk mostly about the import wizard, but I will quickly reference the copy paste ability. For example, I have an Excel file, information's all over. We are able to Control C, copy, go over to jump, make a new data table. Then I'm going to do an operation called edit, paste with column names. That will take the first row of information that was copied from Excel and assume that's the intention for column names. We execute this. You'll see it moves right into jump. You'll notice that the columns, uh, are set properly. For example, the first one is I double click. It is set to a character column with nominal data type, whereas the second is set as a numeric with a continuous data type. So the copy paste works. However, there's no traceability this information, just like we had typed it in, Jump doesn't know where it came from, and this action is not repeatable. So now we're going to take a look at the Excel import wizard. We can use this to select which worksheet we're going to open. We will use the data preview to confirm our choices in locating the data within the worksheet. Our first example is going to bring in information in a potato production tab from an Excel worksheet. You'll notice there are names at the top that are the intentions for column headers. There's several spaces, and then the data begin on row five. So let's go take a look at that and jump. Okay, we're going to go do a file open. Opening our example using the Excel wizard. I'm going to select the potato production worksheet. The first question is where does the data start? The column headers in this instance, we will press the increment button and get that up to two. And now we notice the column headers are where we want them. We notice the data is still a little bit further down. 
we could either increment up down these arrows or we can just touch it and hit the plus button which it will use our entry that we've established visually when we hit the plus button click import and there we go So when planning your move from Excel to Jump, it's good to have the architecture and structure of the data in mind when you start heading there. There may be steps you can do within Excel, knowing you will later get to Jump that makes this easier. And again, we're going through the wizard in Jump that shows all the options. This session does describe the use of the import wizard we will touch on a few table operations, but those will be described in greater detail in a future session entitled Preparing Your Data for Analysis. Just so, just a little teaser for that upcoming session. So let's go through some other import examples. Along the way, we'll see some data tips and think about using the data for analysis. So we'll go back to take another look at a slightly more complex example. This one has some merge cells. We'll go look at this in Excel. Now what we notice here is there's a several rows that contain information and these have been merged. If I'm just going up and down the data table, you'll notice how the shape of the selection changes when it hits a merge cell. This also occurs going across. This location Wilson is meant to apply to all these cells. The author of the Excel sheet for cosmetic reasons has done a merge cells. So these are all grouped as one thing. Now I'm also going to track another example of this where cosmetically someone is documenting the progression of the method version column from alpha to beta, and they've just written the information once, but the cells are not merged. We're going to see how to handle this as well. So let's go over to jump. We'll double click on our file, restore our default, and start to take a look at how we're going to bring this in. So the column headers, uh, we want there to be two rows of column headers. And notice how it will concatenate when needed. So we get both information from the Excel joined in a single header. The data starts there. Now let's take a look at this next button because you'll notice by default, this Wilson location has been applied to all these rows correctly. So we can see replicate data in spanned rows. This merge cells spans these rows so I can click and unclick and see what happens. Now some of these other selections, uh, we'll just take a look, suppress hidden columns. I click that and lo and behold, wow, there was some extra information over there in Excel columns that were hidden that perhaps we didn't notice originally. So Jump does see that information and you can control whether we want to bring it in or not. So I will say to suppress that because we just want to get this one table. And here it comes. Now it's in Jump looks like everything came in correctly. I want to show you how to deal with instances where perhaps this information should be carried down to subsequent rows. It's just really a cosmetic limiting. Select the column, right click, fill, replace missing with previous value. And there you go. It's fully populated and we're ready to go. multiple tables in one worksheet. Let's take a look at this example where we have some semiconductor information. We can recognize with column headers, but we can also see that there's some information that perhaps describes the column spec limits placed above. So let's first get the initial information in. We'll take a quick look. 
See how big this is? It's like 1400 some rows. So we're going to go over to jump, double click our file, restore default. And let's start to get this in column headers starting on row four, one row of column headers, data starts next, and we're ready to import. Now to get that other information in, let's double click this again. Our column headers start on row four, but we want to get that spec limit information in. So if we can force this up, looking across the data table a little bit, and we want to get the data starting on row two, next and the data ending here. These numbers are in jump language. So now we start to see we've got low spec and high spec for all these column names. The column name came from the this row within Excel. And we've got the information now that we intend to be in the two rows there. So we're ready to bring that in. I'm going to quickly do a table transpose operation and just show you a little bit of the forming for this. Let's go ahead and select all the columns that we want to transpose. And we want to label them by this. We see the preview, so that gives us a good information about what it's going to look like. This immediate feedback is very helpful. And we're going to call this spec limits just for fun. And let's call this variable. Let's call this LSL and USL. And where am I going with this, you wonder? So now we've got this power converter file that we've opened. Okay, we're gonna proceed and take a quick look at what we can do with those spec limits that we just brought in. Let's go to our data table, quickly select all of the process variables. And then we've got a table where we can load spec limits from a table. We made one and they're in. Let's save those to column properties. You now see the icon light up and we'll right click column information and you can see the spec limits are there. Since those are now in for all the columns, we can do a process screening analysis that allows us to select all of the relevant columns and quickly get a table analyzing the process capability, defect rate, things like that, that quickly allow screening an entire process at once.